Georgina. I'm originally from Australia and I've been living in the UK for about seven years now. Um, I recently got my British citizenship, so I feel a very strong connection to both countries, even though they're 10,000 miles apart and on opposite sides of the world. Um, this is a very popular children's story in Australia. It's about a pudding that never disappears, no matter how much you eat, and it can change into whatever flavour you want. And it was read to me as a child and I loved it because what child wouldn't love the idea of like a never ending pudding, especially one that's a character that speaks and it's really rude and everyone's fighting over it. And it's basically just food and fighting and what kid wouldn't love that. And I still really love the idea of a never ending pudding, especially when I'm watching the Great British Bake Off or I'm <laughs> baking my banana bread in lockdown. I just, I think that there's something so comforting about baking and cooking, no matter where you are in the world. Um, and I still, I have a very strong connection to this story because there's this fantastic sculpture of the characters in the Botanic Gardens in Melbourne, which was like a second home to me growing up. It's, it's where my dad worked and it was the first place I went from the hospital after I was born. Um, so whenever we go back, I always visit the sculpture and I rub the pudding's head for luck. So I hope you enjoy the story as much as I did. Christmas food catalog time is my favorite time of year, especially when it has a pudding like this on the cover. It is perhaps one of the most universally acknowledged truths that the worst part about eating a pudding is when it's all gone. I've also heard people say that it is impossible to both have your pudding and eat it too, but I reckon you can, if you just know where to look. In the first course of our delectable story, we meet a young koala who lives with his uncle in a tree house, which sounds pretty nice, were it not for the fact that the uncle's whiskers are so massive that there's not enough room for them both inside. Plus, these whiskers tend to get in their soup, and if you've ever found a hair in your soup, you know that's not very tasty at all. One day, this all becomes too much for our koala, and he decides to leave home to see the world. Adopting a walking stick and an air of pleasure, he sets off down the bush track, but he has made one catastrophic error. He's forgotten to pack anything for lunch. Famished with hunger, he rounds a bend and sees a strange sight. A sailor and a penguin eating lunch. <gasps> the smell is too much to resist. He makes his way over. <coughs> Gosh, this smells delightful. Am I right in supposing that to be a, a, a steak and kidney pudding? The sailor nods. Ah. Well, at the moment, it is. Well, our koala wants nothing more than to invite himself to sit, but he just can't find the way. He continues to make appreciative nods and noises. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. This polite exchange is undercut by a gruff voice coming from the pudding bowl itself. Quit your moaning and groaning and just have a slice. What's a pudding got to do to get eaten around here? For you see, this pudding is not just delicious, it is cantankerous, with a set of stick-like arms and legs, and a pretty foul mouth, to be honest. This pudding is a special pudding, a pudding so special that you can eat and eat and he'll never diminish. Cut and cut and he'll always replenish. With just two turns and a whistle, he can change to whatever flavour the diner desires. And he likes nothing more than offering himself up to be eaten. The koala tucks in and eats until he can eat no more. Is that all you've got? I've seen rocks with a bigger appetite than you. But over behind a tree, there are some shady characters keeping an eye on things. A shifty looking wombat and his possum sidekick. These are the pudding thieves and they've only got one thing on their mind. Getting a hold of this mouthy morsel. When they notice, the sailor and the penguin fly into a frenzy. They're always up for a fight and like nothing more than fighting with prospective pudding thieves. The wombat and the possum dash into the bush and our friends breathe a sigh of relief. <sighs> the sailor addresses the koala. Ah, 
How would you like to become part of the noble society of pudding owners? Our job is to stroll, sing, partake of said pudding, and of course keep him safe from those pesky pudding thieves. Well, they celebrate their alliance with a plum pudding that very night. The next course of our story is basically just a constant tug of war between our noble society and the pudding thieves, with our surly little dessert stuck in the middle. They devise ingenious ways of stealing the pudding out from under each other's noses, fighting and stealing and rescuing and fighting some more all across the Australian countryside, until the police have to get involved. But they can't figure out who's actually in the wrong, so they arrest the pudding himself. The final course of our story takes place in the courthouse, but there is no hope of the case being resolved because the judge is busy feasting on the pudding and has no desire to hand him back. But our koala is very clever and he devises a plan. He stands up. <gasps> Stop! Stop feasting on that pudding. I have just heard that it was poisoned this very morning. Well, general panic and fisticuffs ensues and in the chaos, our friends grab the pudding, not poisoned, and make a break for it. And where are they now? Well, we come full circle. Our noble society build a tree house, much like the tree house that opened this story, where they spend the rest of their days. It even has a little pudding paddock for the pudding to take his exercise and shout insults at passers-by. But I am afraid, although I have been an honoured guest of the society, I cannot divulge its location to you for obvious reasons. For pudding thieves do walk amongst us. And this is a very desirable pudding indeed. Mmm. Mmm.